Hello and welcome to Next Times Tax Podcast. We offer crisp, insightful episodes on emerging tax developments and how they may impact businesses across the globe through short interviews with tax experts. In today's podcast, our experts will discuss various critical aspects of UAE corporate tax, including the need of tax groups, comparative analysis for tax groups, tax losses, structuring, and several others. I'm your host Jitain Ganatra. I'm part of Next Time, and joining me today on this podcast is Nishit Parikh and Chirag Chilani. Nishit is a practicing chartered accountant with over 14 years of experience advising several corporate. on matters relating to international tax regulatory structuring of inbound and outbound investments nishit has also been actively advising clients in structuring investments in the uae region and working on uae corporate tax and transferring matters nishit has authored numerous articles and regularly addresses forums on international tax topics including uae cd and transferring tirak has over 10 years of well rounded experience in corporate international and indirect tax areas Tirag is a group tax manager for a luxury real estate firm in the UAE. In his current role, Tirag deals with formulating tax strategies to set up optimal tax structures, evaluating new investments, monitoring tax litigation matters, and identifying potential tax exposures domestically and internationally. Welcome and thanks for joining Nishit and Tirag. I want to take this opportunity to discuss a few critical aspects of UAE corporate tax law and understand your views. Nishit Tax group is much talked about. In your view, what are the key advantages or other disadvantages of forming tax group? Thank you, Jitain, for inviting me. A uh, very relevant question. Tax group as a concept is very relevant in the region. Typically, there have been many large groups which have over the years created multiple entities, SPVs, due to various commercial reasons and business needs. now with implementation of corporate tax and transferring regulation in uae it would become extremely difficult to manage tax compliances for so many entities and hence concept of tax group would be very important for this large group to list down few key advantages of tax group would be entire group is treated as a single taxable person there is flexibility to add and delete entities single registration and single compliance can be done for a tax group you get the benefit of consolidation so any entity which is a loss making entity would have the benefit of setting off the loss with another entity which is a profit making entity since all the entity within the group would be consolidated the entire transferring focus would be lost because there is no two distinct entity where any tax arbitrage or benefit can be taken and hence overall transfer pricing compliance and uh, overall rigors of transfer pricing would mellow down considerably also there have been a detailed provisions and guidelines provided on how pre group tax losses of subsidiary can be used to set off loss at a tax group level and what kind of uh, tax losses would not be allowed so all in all it will provide a better cash flow management and better compliance management to large group on the other end some of the disadvantages would be also there for a tax group say if you have a 20 entities in a group you will not be able to claim the basic exemption of say roughly around $100,000 that is 375,000 AD which is available only once otherwise all 20 entity in itself could have claimed that exemption another important aspect which is slightly not aligned uh, very much is that the benefit of forming a tax group is available only if you have a resident holding company so in case there is a situation where there is a foreign group which has multiple subsidiaries in uae they will not be able to form a tax group unless they set up a holding company in uae which then holds all the step down investments uh, so that is something which can bother a lot of foreign groups which have not uh, set up a holding company in uae also there may be multiple accounting systems uh, financial years being followed by various entities within a group now that would have to be aligned in order to form a tax group the parent company has to own 95% of the share or the voting rights in the subsidiary directly or indirectly i believe this percentage could have been slightly lower than lot of people could have claimed advantage 
of this tax groups uh, in UAE. Also, while there is a single registration, single compliance, but in order to make application for a tax group, all the entities are initially required to take registration and then uh, potentially a tax group would be formed. So all in all, it's a welcome move, barring few disadvantages, it's a welcome move. Interesting. In fact, uh, tax groups are also part of VAT regime. Chirag, what is different here if you could throw some light? Hi, Jitin. Thanks for inviting me. VAT group is very different to a uh, corporate tax group. Uh, the conditions to form a group are different. Uh, as Nisit pointed out, that you need a 95% or above shareholding, which may be direct or indirect for a corporate tax group. On the flip side, the VAT uh, conditions for the VAT group is 50% of an interest in the voting rights or the market value or the control. So under VAT group, you would look at economic, financial or organizational ties, whereby groups which are controlled uh, under common controllership would also get covered in the v, uh, for VAT purposes. However, though, for corporate tax grouping, you need, you know, the tax residency. The criteria are very different. You need the 95%. So all these tests are more restrictive compared to VAT. And I mean, for instance, groups which already have VAT groups, which have UAE companies which are controlled from outside UAE, those groups could be, uh, would now not be part of the corporate tax groups as such. So it's a completely different concept. And these are two different things we are looking at. And that is how the group should approach it. Okay, I understand. Um, Chirag, in your current role, you've been looking at tax matters globally. So how do you see Pillar 2 provisions evolving in UAE? Also, should any consideration to Pillar 2 provisions be given while forming tax groups? Sure, this is a very interesting topic. Um, as such, there have been there has been a lot of work from the OECD on Pillar 2 since September 2021. And all of that work was, you know, called slow progress till very recently we had an update saying that, you know, 138 countries have now agreed for an outcome statement, which indicates significant progress on Pillar 2 implementation. Now, under the Pillar 2 rules, the countries are encouraged to adopt a minimum tax regime of 15%. And that is what UAE has done. So by implementing the corporate tax rules, now the groups in UAE would be, you know, the profits would be taxed by the UAE tax authorities at 9% and they wouldn't lose on revenue. In, an, in a situation where there is no corporate tax, these, uh, the income would be taxed anyway, uh, but it might go in the hands of uh, different uh, tax authorities in outside UAE. So um, you, would, you could see maybe even Bahrain coming up with a similar proposal, wherein, uh, you know, out of the Pillar 2 initiative, um, a lot of countries would now bring in corporate tax rules. So um, for, for the UAE groups, it is very important that they ensure that their structures are tax efficient from a UA corporate tax grouping as well as the Pillar 2 perspective. Thanks, Shirak. I'll move to Nishit now. Uh, Nishit, what are your thoughts on carrying forward of tax losses provisions, especially what happens in case of a change of ownership? So tax losses in UAE uh, luckily can be carried forward and set off for an indefinite period. Only condition there is that uh, it can be set off against 75% of the income in the subsequent year. So if you have say 100 as an income in the next year and a carry forward loss of 200, then the set off would be restricted to 75 and on the balance 25 you will have to pay taxes. However, it would be important to note that no relief for tax losses which are incurred prior to your city regime become applicable would be allowed. Also, if there are any losses which are pertaining to any activity which is for generating an exempt income, 
that would also not be allowed but interestingly one open point which i have a view that losses from those activities should be allowed is on bad debts there could be potentially a scenario where you would have done some sales and business prior to the ct rejoin and after the ct rejoin was implemented potentially you realize that the money is not no longer going to be received uh, from the debtor and you need to write it off in your books so that potentially should not be a disallowance or any loss generated because of that kind of a write off should be allowed to be carried forward in my view also like you pointed out on the ownership side there are two specific condition to carry forward uh, the business losses one is that 50% of the shareholding should remain same if you want to claim the tax losses in future if that 50% shareholding condition is not satisfied there is an alternative given under the law which says that you can still continue to claim carry forward of losses if you continue to do the same business or similar line of business again what is same business they have broadly defined that the business which is done using the same asset it does not result in significant change in the core activity which is undertaken by the earlier entity and it is from the exploitation of the same assets or services or products so this is a broad construct as to how the carry forward of losses has been defined important point to note is that this provisions would not apply to any listed companies and would be more applicable to a private company for a listed company there is no conditions you can carry forward loss indefinitely interesting so similarly what happens to transfer of tax losses in in what situation it would be relevant so transfer of tax losses again this is a good concept which helps corporates in uae to leverage on the overall group so today as the provision stands a tax loss can be transferred from one taxable person to another subject to satisfaction of certain conditions so say there are two group entities in uae one is a loss making entity second is a profit making entity the loss making entity can transfer its losses to the profit making entity subject to few condition like both are resident person both have a common ownership of 75% then they are not part of any qualifying free zone they should be using same financial year same accounting standard again the condition of allowing set off up to the income of the 75% only would be allowed that is again if the loss transfer is 200 but the per, but the profit making entity only has 100 as its profit then only 75 can be set off even though the carry forward loss was 200 or the loss transfer was 200 so that would be restricted to 75 on 25 they will have to pay tax you don't need to form a tax group in order to transfer tax losses this can be done independently only challenge here for larger groups could be where they are operating through a subsidiary as well as through a branch since there is a condition that two juridical persons are required a branch or a pe of a foreign company may not be considered as a resident person in uae and hence the transfer of losses in a situation between a subsidiary of a foreign company and a branch of the foreign company may not happen and in the, those cases the companies may have to really see whether if the branch is a loss making branch whether they need to convert that branch into a subsidiary so that they can optimize their taxes in the region thank you nishit uh peter how do you see uae groups would benefit from the restructuring provisions under the uae cd coming to the restructuring provisions these provisions basically give the benefit uh to the groups to have a tax neutral transfer and what it means is that now the groups don't really have to transfer these assets at market value they could transfer it to the net uh, you know at the net book value you know by with the help of these restructuring provisions otherwise there was uh, you know there's a very potential exposure a very large exposure on uh, in by way of capital gains and also the transfer pricing rules could trigger in in such transfers so um what the uae has done is they've brought in um rules for qualifying groups wherein uh these qualifying groups can transfer assets between their members at the net book value 
uh, and in order to qualify, um, the group members should be owned uh, under common controllership by 75% or more. Or it could also be held by a third party for, uh, you know, uh, the, the holding could be 75% or more for both the group members, which could be held under co common controllership. So these once these eligibility criteria are fulfilled uh, and you are qualified, a qualified group, then um, groups could basically transfer their asset uh, in a way which would not have any tax. So this is very beneficial, especially in a country like UAE, where, uh, you know, it's um, like groups would be having a lot of um, holding companies, uh, maybe in the mainland or even in the free zone. Um, although free zone is a separate topic and you know, we could uh, cover it later on. But uh, these restructuring provisions allow the groups to have a tax neutrality concept similar to what we've seen in the Dutch rules under fiscal unity. So that's that's pretty beneficial. Interesting. You you touched upon free zone and, you know, I was coming to my last question, uh, you know, and this conversation cannot be complete if we don't speak about free zone. So what are your thoughts on overall impact on free zone businesses? Maybe Jira, you can continue and then we go to Dishit. Sure. Yeah. So from the decisions, it is pretty clear that to claim a free zone exemption, groups should have adequate substance in that free zone. So this is something which can be monitored by the current ESR notifications and reporting obligations which the group would be complying with already. And they need to be very cautious on their ESR reporting obligations uh, when it comes to free zone, especially to claim the benefit. Now, the other aspect here is that, you know, free zone, let's say I have like a group has a free zone holding company holding subsidiaries um, in mainland companies. If they, op if they are claiming the exemption, then they cannot benefit from tax grouping. The subsidiaries, uh, because for tax grouping purposes, you need a parent subsidiary relationship. And if, and tax grouping doesn't allow qualifying free zone companies. So even though subsidiaries are not covered in tax grouping, the other um, option which the groups could look at would be making an election and opting out of the free zone exemption, which means that now, um, you know, all of those revenues coming in the free zones from the mainland, provided it's not making them ineligible for the free zone exemption, um, they could benefit from the tax grouping provision. Thanks, Dr. Nishit. Yes, so free zone, in my view, it has been a roller coaster ride for free zone companies with so many changes, so many suspense, so much suspense rather. As it stands today, I believe a lot of companies are impacted and may come under the tax net. It should be noted that all the service company except uh, companies engage in investment advisory or wealth management or providing certain specific type of services to their head office or related party may technically be liable to tax now in UAE. So if you look at all the companies, say, be it an architectural company, be it an uh, institute who is into teaching business or a gym or a hotel which is dealing with individuals, all of them would now be impacted. So earlier, uh, it was more to do with whether you are transacting with mainland or you are transacting with other person. Now, you need to be not only looking at that, you also need to look at what is the kind of services you are providing. Whether it's a qualifying service, whether it's an excluded activity, so it has become slightly complex. So, it becomes very important for all the free zone companies to ensure that they do a appropriate impact analysis of this a new ministerial decision and the law and see how they can prepare for implementation of the law and also see whether there are any opportunities as to how they can optimize the taxes uh, if they have to ultimately pay tax optimization of taxes would become a very very important point for all the free zone companies which are impacted by the recent changes 
great thank you nishit and chirag for spending time and shedding light on various aspects of this uh, uae's corporate tax and transferizing topic i'm sure our listeners will find this information insightful too thank you everyone for listening in if you have any questions on this subject or have suggestions for future topics write to us at thinknext@thereadnexttime.com